in an abandoned house in some area on the battlefield. Two people are tied with their hands behind their backs, their faces still bearing clear traces of torture. A young man wearing a torn three-hole shirt and his short hair is apologizing to Professor for his squad's failure to rescue him. Don't say that. I'm the one who should apologize. You got captured because you saved me. The three-hole shirt guy is still angry about the traitor's sudden betrayal. He provided misleading information, leading the entire team into the current predicament. Suddenly, the door opens, and another person is kicked into the room upon closer inspection. The battered face belongs to Sergeant Kim, the three-hole shirt guy, heated with anger and about to attack the scar-faced traitor is effortlessly struck in the back of the neck with the butt of a gun, causing him to fall face first before leaving. The scar-faced traitor glances and smirks contemptuously at him. Without time to inquire about the situation of his comrades, the door opens again, and an unexpected guard appears. The guard falls with a thud. Revealing the person standing behind him, our protagonist steps forward, asking, is there anyone named Kang Ham Chan here? That's me. I've come to rescue you. Untie the remaining prisoners and follow me as everyone moves to the corridor. They are extremely surprised to see the enemies lying lifeless on the ground. Suddenly, two enemy figures appear as Lieutenant Kang raises his gun to prepare for a fight. There's a series of swift and precise sounds. and our protagonist deals with them swiftly without even needing to use his gun. All right, from now on, we need to pick up the pace. I'll clear the way, those behind me. If you spot any survivors, handle them without using guns. Got it, all right. Before finishing the sentence, the protagonist rushes forward like a blazing comet. Only the continuous sound of gunfire can be heard. And Lieutenant Kang hastily follows, However, he can only watch in astonishment as the protagonist's figure advances, leaving countless enemy bodies on the floor. He's like a monster, but he moves too recklessly. That's not how a soldier should move, Lieutenant Kang thinks. Ten minutes later, at the assembly point, Lieutenant Kang reunites with the team members who were taken elsewhere. How did you manage to escape on your own? We also had the help of the guy who rescued you. The protagonist's rescue mission concludes here. And the two prepare to bid farewell when a strange noise echoes. The protagonist shouts, Everyone! Get down! A deafening explosion follows. When Lieutenant Kang regains his senses, all he sees is smoke and dust, his headaches, ears ringing, and he's unable to continue the fight. Suddenly, the sound of gunfire nearby grabs his attention. And when he turns, he sees his skilled ally engaging with the enemy. Due to the explosion, the protagonist's face mask falls off, and Lieutenant Kang struggles to open his eyes wider to clearly see the face of the idol. Who saved him? To his surprise, the one who rescued Lieutenant Kang turns out to be just a kid. Returning to the present, the homeroom teacher is introducing a new transfer student to everyone. Nice to meet you all. I'm Ai Jin Yu. As the character Ai Jin Yu is introduced, his role is revealed, the male protagonist of this story. Formerly a mercenary on the battlefield for 10 years with an enigmatic identity, now retired and back home as a high school student, living with his grandfather and younger sister. He possesses a tall and handsome appearance that captivates girls, with a friendly and cheerful personality, yet not easily intimidated, in a high school in South Korea. The beautiful girl introduced is Dae Yin Yu, the younger sister of the protagonist who sits lost in thought about her brother. On his first day at the school, Oh my, everyone, look at that handsome guy, just transferred to our school, and already attending classes in the upper grade. 
The girls in the class are excitedly gossiping about the new handsome guy. Who transferred from the upper grade? While Dayinu reminisces about the moment she reunited with her brother at the airport, her grandfather tears up, embracing Aijin emotionally, saying, Grandchild, is it really you? You're truly alive. I've never stopped hoping for this moment in the past 10 years. Dayin is in a daze, looking at his brother who has been separated for so long. This moment is indescribable in words. Hey, Dayin Yu, Dayin startles. How long are you going to ignore me? A blonde girl faces Dayin and shouts loudly. Her name is Heejin, the bully, specializing in bullying other girls. Especially Dayin, didn't I tell you to bring me your gym clothes before the physical education? Class? Do you have them with you? I have them. But if I lend them to you, what will I wear? Dayan says. And the blonde girl immediately slaps Dayan, as if from the heavens. Luckily, Dayan is mild-mannered, if it were me. I would retaliate without hesitation. Others in the class feel indignant but dare not speak up. Fearing repercussions, the scene shifts to grade T year three, where the homeroom teacher is introducing the new students. This is Ai Jin Yu. He's recently returned from overseas, so he's still unfamiliar. Please help him, everyone, the girls below cheer. He's so handsome, oh my, I want to marry him. While the boys show jealous and uncomfortable expressions, do you see the empty seat at the back? From now on, it's your seat, the teacher says. Yes, ma'am, Aijin replies. On his way to his desk, Aijin has to pass by a brown-haired guy due to irritation in the main character's eyes. Combined with the instigation from his close friend, the brown-haired guy plans to trip Aijin. Hoping to create pressure for future bullying, he times it perfectly as Aijin arrives, extending his leg. But unexpectedly, Aijin stops right in front of the brown-haired guy's shoe and both stand frozen for about three seconds. Aijin glances to see who it is, and the brown-haired guy, embarrassed and angry, exclaims, Damn it, I had it perfectly timed. Who does he think he is? Giving me a dirty look. Do you believe I'll gouge your eyes out? The main character is about to punch him. When he remembers the lieutenant's advice, Aijin, when you're in South Korea, Try to avoid fighting as much as possible. I know, Aijin says. How can I hastily engage in a fight without knowing anything about the opponent and the situation around me? It'll be never before I act recklessly and get killed like an amateur, Lieutenant. I've lived on the battlefield for 10 years. I'm an expert in this matter. At this point, the Lieutenant is left speechless. He says, that's enough. That's not what I meant. I reminded you not to fight because I'm concerned for your opponent. It's a bit strange to cause trouble. Within the first 10 minutes of class, so let's just overlook him this time. Aijin flashed a smile and went to his seat. His brown hair made him appear even more attractive to the main character. Later, the brown-haired guy realized that this was his life's luck for not provoking the main character. Hello, I'm Yanchen Park, and your name is Aijin Yu, right? From now on, we're desk mates. So let's support each other, Yangchen spoke softly, introducing Aijin to the class. In the class, you shouldn't mess with Jaehyung Lee, the guy with brown hair from earlier, and his close friend Haikyu. They might just be troublemakers in the class, but bothering them can be quite troublesome, all right? Thanks for the advice. The math class slowly passed by. On the podium, the math teacher was writing on the board. While some students diligently took notes, others dozed off. And some scrolled through their phones. Aijin glanced outside and saw another class having a physical education lesson, reminding him of the days of training on the battlefield. Running with a gun in the rain for 10 kilometers, crawling through mud in the saltwater swamp, and shooting until his arms were exhausted. To survive in that world, Aijin had to exchange countless sweat, tears, and even blood 
Compared to that hell, this place seemed truly peaceful. As the dismissal time arrives, Aijin waits for Dayan at the school gate. You waited for me, huh? Dayan asks. Yes. That's right. I wanted us to go home together. Aijin responds. Okay, sure. However, both feel awkward not knowing how to initiate a conversation. This seems a bit strange. Doesn't it? Dayan comments. No, it's not that strange. While passing by a convenience store, they accidentally bump into a girl who always wears a hairpin in her hair. She asks, Hey, Dayan Yu, who are you going with? Is he your boyfriend? No, he's my older brother. Dayan replies, Oh my. You even have an older brother. You guys are something else. Are they your classmate, Dayan? Yes, Dayan answers. What's this? Say it again. Who is your friend? How? A pet trying to be on par with the owner, looking at the group mocking her, as if challenging them. The curly-haired chubby guy adopts a gangster pose. You scoundrel, dare to glare at us? Want to die? Aijin maintains his gaze, infuriating the chubby guy, who stands up. Still want to give me that look? I can't tolerate this scoundrel any longer. The chubby guy approaches, intending to intimidate Aijin. What's up? You want to act tough in front of your little sister. Aijin recalls Lieutenant Kang's words. No fighting allowed. So, he sighs and lets it go. However, the chubby guy thinks Aijin is looking down on him. So he rushes forward, grabs Aijin's shirt, and plans to slap him. I'm sorry, Daijin buzz and explains. My older brother has been living abroad since he was a child, so he's not used to the culture here. What does that have to do with me? Or do you want to get beaten up too, kid? Seeing his sister's frightened expression, Aijin realizes that she has suffered a lot from the bullying behavior of these students. Aijin pushed the chubby guy away and took off his jacket to cover his sister's eyes. Sparing her from witnessing the unfolding scene, be good, stay here and wait for me for a minute. He said, the chubby guy got up and rushed to attack Aijin from behind, attempting a sneak attack. However, due to the noise and clear intentions, Aijin turned around, delivering a left-handed punch directly to the chubby guy's face, sending him flying and unconscious. Sigh. Just on the first day of school, and I've already broken my promise to Lieutenant Kang. Aijin sighed at the South Korean military base. A couple of soldiers were training shirtless. Two figures stood at a distance, talking Lieutenant Kang and Sergeant Kim, who appeared in the first chapter. Lieutenant, isn't today the first day that Aijin kid goes to school? Asked Kim. Exactly, replied Kang. I know. But I'm still worried about that kid. Despite spending half a year instructing him, he lived in hell for 10 years. I'm afraid he might struggle to adapt to regular life with a confident face. Lieutenant Kang said, you don't need to worry about that kid. After all, I've personally trained him. Are you sure? Asked Kim. Of course, answered Kang. Lieutenant Kang was right. Ajin was playfully interacting with the two seniors but his way of blending in was quite peculiar. Ma'am, the chubby guy was punched by Aijin and lay on the ground. Seeing their comrade motionless, the remaining two were a bit shaken before they could react. Aijin rushed towards them, delivering a punch to the bald-headed one's stomach, sending him flying over the railing. Turning around, Aijin used the eyes of an assassin to gaze at the girl who had just insulted his sister. Making her pale in fear, does he intend to hit a girl too? She wondered, brother. Dayan's clear voice rang out. And Aijin's eyes softened. He ignored the girl and walked towards his sister. I'm sorry, do you want to eat something? Let me go buy it for you, Aijin asked. No need, big brother, Dayan replied. Then let's continue heading home, he said. Aijin's gentle gestures and the predatory gaze from earlier seemed unbelievable as if they belonged to two different people. Before heading home, Dayan said goodbye to her friend. While Aijin gave her a menacing look, does he hold a grudge against me now? 
Did you do something to them? Dayan asked Aijin. That's right. Knowing that her brother had intervened with the gang at school to protect her, Dayan felt both warm and a bit worried. Both of them continued their journey home, feeling a bit awkward, at their grandfather's house. After dinner, Grandpa said, Let him do it. Just sit and enjoy your dessert, Aijin said in his cute. Strawberry patterned apron. No problem, Grandpa, you've cooked, so let me handle the dishes. Aijin replied, I hope you like the food I cooked, said the grandfather. Yes, it's delicious. Grandpa, so the first day of school went smoothly, ha huh, ha, huh. well, it was good. The two guys who were knocked out by IJIN would probably feel quite upset hearing that. Then it's good, you to sleep well, said the grandfather. Yes, Grandpa, good night, lying on the bed. Aijin recalled the moments with his grandfather from the airport to tonight's dinner. All those moments warmed Aijin's heart. And he drifted into sleep with a smile on his face. Images of the horrific plane crash when Aijin was nine years old appeared in his dream, jolting him awake. After personal hygiene, he went downstairs to find Dayan had prepared breakfast. I've reheated the food. Go ahead and eat. I have an early class. So I have to leave now. Bye, big brother. In the first year class. You say the new guy who transferred is Dayan's brother. And you guys got beaten up so badly yesterday, right? Let me find that Dayan. The blonde girl spoke about the incident from yesterday, but even now. The girl with the hairpin remained frightened. The two senior guys knocked down in the blink of an eye, coupled with Aijen's predatory gaze at that moment, made her think about stopping the bullying against Dayan. However, remembering that Heejin's older brother was a real gangster in the third year, she felt more reassured. Besides, their parents were influential, and having someone to cover for them like this made them less afraid of that monster. Dayan was walking in the hallway when suddenly something flew towards her head. Turning around, she saw Heejin approaching. Follow me quickly, Heejin demanded. But where are we going? Dayan asked. What? Are you questioning me about where we're going today just because you have a big brother? Do you dare to defy me, shut up and follow me? Or do you want me to deal with you right here, pulling Dayan into a secluded corner of the school? Heejin immediately delivered a blow to Dayan's stomach. I heard your brother is quite skilled in fighting, but now he can't even protect himself. Let me tell you something. Those two guys your brother hit are my close friends, and now both our big brothers have probably met each other. What are you planning with my brother? Dayan exclaimed loudly but received an immediate slap from Heejin. Who allowed you to scream in my face, you little wretch? Thinking that her older brother might be subjected to the thug's harassment for protecting her. Dayan, despite the pain, stood up and ran quickly to Aijin's classroom. In Aijin's classroom, four students brazenly walked in. With the two guys Aijin had beaten up yesterday leading the way. The last person was an orange-haired young man smirking. He was the older brother of the blonde girl specializing in bullying Dayan. Dayan had also arrived at this point and shouted, Brother. Aijin turned and saw Dayan, his clothes stained, and a red mark on his face from someone's slap. Everything around seemed frozen. And at this moment, it seemed like only two people existed, Aijin silently staring at his little sister. In the third year class, five minutes before the brawl erupted, Yang Chen Park, a trembling boy, sat quietly, making a target for two bullies in the class playing with erasers. Ha ha! Did you see that? Two consecutive hits and the last one was a headshot. One of them bragged. Now it's my turn. Give me the eraser. Watch this. Another one said, Wish bop. The rubber ball hit Yang Chen's head directly. Both bullies burst into laughter, even comparing their throws to sniper rifles and AK guns to determine the winner. The brown-haired boy took another rubber ball and challenged Yang Jin. This time, the eraser accidentally hit Ai Jin as he walked by, 
Once again, this annoying guy is in the way. I feel irritated just looking at him. One of them remarked, If you don't like it, deal with him. Wait until school is over. And we'll call him out to settle things, the other suggested. All right. Ai Jin took a seat, and Yang Chen whispered to him, Do you have any plans after class? If not, come wander around with me. I'll introduce you to some interesting places. Oh, today is not possible. I have to go home with my little sister. Oh, your sister also transferred here with you. No. She has been studying here from the beginning. What's her name? Maybe I know her. Her name is Dayan Yu. Ah, Dayan Yu. The first year student, exactly. Do you know her too? Well, the truth is, she's been through a lot here. Since the secondary grade, Dayan has been famous in the school for being both beautiful and smart. Many boys pursued her. At that time, there was a girl who liked that man, but he didn't reciprocate the feelings. Due to unrequited love, the girl began to envy and bully Dayan. When we entered high school, Dayan faced even more challenges, sharing a class with the bullies. But she still tries to endure and go to school. If it were me, I would have dropped out long ago. So, Dayan is being bullied. But why did no one stand up for her among the students and boys? The brother of that girl is Jisoo Kim, the school's boss, so no one dares to oppose him. So Dayan faces so many hardships at school, and yet she strives for academic success. To put her grandfather at ease, thanks for letting me know. Jisoo Kim and Heejin Kim have just been put on the blacklist of Aijin, preparing for some turbulence. At this time, a fat guy kicked the classroom door with a bang and boldly walked in. Followed by three more guys, the fat guy who was punched in the face by Aijin yesterday. His nose still has medical tape on it like that, but has drawn you to revenge. What are you planning on doing in our class? Just taking care of business, the last guy said, looking closely, he was just Su Kim. The two gangsters in the class felt worried and didn't dare say. Another word, seeing that the guy who beat up my two friends was just a gentle student. Jisoo immediately cursed at his friends. Are you kidding me? Were you beaten by that weakling? It's because I lost my temper yesterday, that's why. Hey. That bastard. Yeah. It's you. Come here. Jisoo pointed at Aijin and spoke loudly. Aijin stood up. Seeing Aijin being singled out by Jisoo like that. The two gangsters in the class also worried about Aijin's fate. You are Jisoo Kim, right? Oh, you just transferred to school yesterday. And you already know me. You understand what will happen next, right? What are you guys waiting for? Come and drag him out here for me. At that moment, Dayan had also rushed to the classroom door. Shouting loudly, Aijin, Everyone turned to see Dayan's face reddened from a slap. Her clothes stained, and a clear shoe mark on her stomach. Her condition was extremely dire. Oh, isn't this Heejin's lapdog? She knows her big brother is about to get beaten, so she anxiously runs over. Ho, oh, truly jealous. Can't compare to my little sister. Who's always causing trouble after working? I apologize for involving you, Dayan said. Trembling. You don't need to apologize. Those who should apologize are them. Earlier. Just hearing Yang Chen recount the incident of his sister being bullied had already made I J I N angry. Now, witnessing it firsthand only fueled his anger further. Bam, a punch landed directly on the shaved guy's face, sending him to the ground. The curly haired chubby guy rushed up with the intention of revenge for getting beaten yesterday. Aijin immediately targeted the vulnerable spot, hitting the guy's neck and causing him to fall and groan in pain. The third guy was simple. One punch to the ribs was enough for these weaklings. This was a true one-shot, one-kill scenario. With all three knocked out in just a few seconds, despite being a school boss accustomed to fights, Jisoo witnessed a battle of this caliber for the first time. Leaving the onlookers in awe, ha, hey, haven't you guys fought yet? I just blinked. 
And those guys are already down. Or maybe, I did. Could you do it again for us to watch? As for the last guy, pay attention and open your eyes wide. Ijin slowly approached the orange-haired guy, his gaze sharp as he asked. I heard that my little sister has suffered enough because of you guys recently. Right, being singled out like this, the Kim brothers looked pale, sweating profusely. At this point, Jisoo regained his composure and smirked. You're quite impressive, but that's as far as it goes, suddenly. Jesse used his right leg to deliver a diagonal kick straight to Aijin's face. Bam, it seemed like Jisoo had successfully knocked down Aijin. But upon closer inspection, Aijin had raised his hand to block Jisoo Kim's attack. Surely Jisoo was also a taekwondo expert. With his right leg rendered ineffective, Jisoo swiftly turned, attacking with his left leg. However, these moves in front of Aijin were like swinging an axe in front of a skilled blacksmith. Aijin gently blocked the attacks and then immobilized Jisoo's leg, preventing him from moving. A punch to the mouth sent Jisoo flying. Truly the school's boss. Taking a punch from Aijin and still not fainting, never had he been beaten like this, angry. Jisoo saw a shadow in front of him. Raising his head to find Aijin staring at him intensely, the author depicted Aijin surrounded by a dark aura as if symbolizing Jisoo's impending future. Bam! Aijin kicked Jisoo, who fell unconscious. The class fell silent, and even a heavy breath could not be heard. The two gangsters in the class looked pale. Oh my god! Even Jisoo Kim was defeated in just a few seconds, Heejin also couldn't believe it, my domineering. Older brother lost so badly. While still in confusion, she saw Aijin looking in her direction. Damn it, is this jerk planning to hit a girl too? Preparing to teach this unruly little Heejin a lesson, Dayin ran up. Pulling her brother's hand, saying, Stop, please, don't do this. Have these guys been bullying you terribly all this time? Dayan looked at Aijin in surprise. Haven't you always been bullied by them? Dayan was amazed. Not knowing how Aijin knew about her being bullied at school. So he fought for me, surprised by her little sister's words. Isn't it always that you've been bullied by them, pleased to see everything settled? Dayan smiled and said, now everything is fine. So please stop, okay? Hearing his little sister say that. Aijin didn't hesitate to stop with these guys. All right, I understand. Let me take you back to class, the two left, leaving behind countless discussions. What just happened? Could he defeat the Jisoo gang by himself? Heejin's face still shows a bit of fear, saying, the new student is really strong, luckily. We didn't mess with him. Back in the classroom, Dayin said, I didn't expect you to be so good at fighting. Dayan felt uneasy talking to her brother. Every time I have to apologize to you, why? Aijin wondered, it's all my fault. Yesterday, you got into a fight, and today as well. What are you talking about, of course? I had to do that. How could I let others bully my little, adorable sister? Aijin calmly stated, where I used to live, most people live for themselves. But when it comes to family, they'll go to great lengths to protect. Even if it means sacrificing their life. That's why I'm curious about what family is. Although I don't remember much, I know one thing for sure. We are family. After taking his sister back to class, Aijin returned to the classroom. And the atmosphere was quite different. Everyone looked at him with admiration and awe. Hey, you're really good at fighting. Where did you learn martial arts? It was like a massacre just now. The two gangsters in the class turned around quickly, acting like they were close friends with Aijin in some other classroom. Jisoo and his gang were sitting dejectedly. Jisoo tried to analyze why he was defeated. Damn it. That guy has something strange about him. His attitude and fighting style, everything is different. While Jisoo was pondering, Heejin kept nagging, so are you guys just going to sit here forever? Earlier, you were just lacking vigilance, right? 
That jerk is alone, unable to fight against him. So you just sit here, angrily, Jisoo shouted. Hey, Heat and Kim, shut your mouth, talking so much. If you're good, go do it yourself. What? Got beaten by him. So now you're venting your anger on me? Annoyed by Jisoo's scolding, Heejin left. Back in the classroom, Heejin saw Dayin sitting there, making her uncomfortable, and said, Now our Dayin is living comfortably. If there's anything you're not happy with, you can go tell your big brother, right? Seeing Dayin not responding. Heejin thought Dayin was looking down on her. The more she thought about it, the angrier she got. I can't let this situation continue, looking at Heejin's sinister expression. One could tell that Dayin would soon endure more suffering. Dayin, you had just finished school, walking thoughtfully. She thought about the moment her brother defeated those bullies. Maybe from now on, I can go to school normally and not be bullied anymore. Memories of the time she was oppressed resurfaced in Dayin's mind. She used to run errands, buy things for Heejin and her gang, bring study materials for them, and if they weren't satisfied, they would physically harm Dayin. She hoped those things would be a thing of the past from today. Hey, what are you daydreaming about, Dayin you? Why don't you react when I call you? I, I'm sorry, were you waiting for me? Yep. Because I don't know the way, he <laughs> he, so? Shall we stop by the supermarket to buy some food for dinner? I'll cook a feast for you. Seeing the two siblings so happy, Heejin became even angrier. Let's see how long your happiness lasts, seeing Heejin's unpleasant face. It was clear that she was plotting something sinister. At the supermarket, while Dayan was choosing groceries, Heejin became the center of everyone's attention. Indeed, the main character is different, wherever he goes. He attracts all eyes, seeing her handsome and tall brother, Dayan asked quietly. In the place you used to live. Didn't you have a girlfriend, girlfriend, I mean not a female friend, but someone you were dating? In that case, no. Ha, why not? You're so popular. Because I've been very busy. Then what about you? Where's your boyfriend? I haven't had one either. He he, why not? I'm also very busy. After dinner at home, Grandpa gave Aijin a surprise. Which was a latest generation smartphone. Aijin, take this, nowadays. Everyone needs one for convenient communication. I don't know if you like it, but they said this is a good phone. This, ha ha. I personally saved Dayan's and my numbers in your phone for easy contact. Yes, thank you. Grandpa, I will take good care of it, back in his room. Aijin immediately used the new phone to send a message to someone. Ding ding. A notification sounded for a new message. In the future, contact me using this phone number. Aijin, oh, so it's Aijin's new phone number. Sergeant Kim also eagerly joined in eavesdropping. Wasn't it the lieutenant who bought him a phone before? Maybe that lieutenant's phone isn't suitable for the younger generation now. No way. I bought the most expensive phone there for him. The next morning, Dayan woke up early, prepared breakfast for her brother, and cheerfully headed to school. It seemed that Grandpa enjoyed the soup she had cooked the night before. So Dayan wanted to spend more time preparing something nutritious for him. While happily thinking about dinner, Ah, Dayan was kicked by someone, causing her to fall to the ground, her clothes damp. Before she could get up, three people wearing masks approached. The girl in front spoke loudly, damn it, walk more carefully, you almost broke my leg. While Dayan was still bewildered, she said, what are you staring at, you wretch, no apology. I, I apologize, slap. The girl in the white shirt gave Dayan a slap, Shut up, do you think an apology is enough? The girl in the hat behind spoke up. Just early in the morning and we're already in a mess. Let's go to karaoke, all of us. Okay, good idea. I need to relieve some stress, then. The last girl sat down, approached Dayan, and said, 
What about you, Day and you? Are you coming to this voice? It's Heat and Kim. Two hours later, the group left the karaoke bar. Not forgetting to discuss the fun they had just experienced, the bar owner sighed. The youth these days are really healthy, screaming for two hours without getting tired. When he opened the door, the bar owner saw Day in lying on the ground, clothes soaked and stained, with blood on her body. Hey, student, are you okay? Or should I call the police? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Dayan gathered her books, put them in her bag, and then walked away. In class. The teacher was also surprised that Dayan skipped school today without any prior notice. That's not like her usual behavior. At the end of the class, Heaton was very satisfied. And the girl with the ponytail asked, Heaton, are you okay? I felt a bit scared. What are you talking about? Her not going to school has nothing to do with us. After school, Aijin remained, as usual. Standing in the same spot waiting for his sister, each person passed by. But they still didn't see his sister. When there was no one left, Aijin called. But she didn't answer. Aijin had to walk home alone when he arrived home. Aijin saw a pair of shoes in front of the door and he knew his sister had come back. So, he went upstairs to check on her, day in. I waited for you to come home, but I didn't see you. I called you, but you didn't answer. Sorry, I overslept, so I didn't know. Hearing Dayin's different voice, Aijin wanted to enter the room, but Dayin replied, I have a fever, so I want to rest and sleep a bit to get better quickly. Okay, if you need anything, just call me to help his sister recover quickly. Aijin decided to go to the pharmacy to buy some fever-reducing medicine when he reached the door. Aijin carefully examined Dayan's shoes and was surprised to see some small bloodstains on them. Could it be that Dayan didn't have a fever, but was bullied by those people? Aijin knew Dayan wasn't suffering from the flu, but probably had some skin wounds, therefore. He firmly brought a first aid kit to check the injuries for his sister. How do you feel? Does it hurt a lot? No, just a bit sore. You said it was because you avoided the oncoming bicycle and slipped down the stairs. Then got injured like this, yes. I think it would be better to let the bike hit you instead, ha ha, perhaps. So, you really don't need to go to the hospital, no, thank you. While verbally responding, Dayan thought that going to the hospital might reveal that these injuries were caused by a fight. Not an accident. Dayan involuntarily remembered the morning in the principal's office when she reported the recent incident to the school. Heijin was denying everything, saying, I didn't do anything wrong. Why does he come and ask me just because he got beaten? Dayan clarified. Even if you wear a hat or a mask, I can still recognize your voice. Only you guys bully me, the principal, standing behind a parent. Said, Dayan, did you see the face of the bully? I didn't see the face, but it was really Heijin's voice. Hearing this, another parent stood up and shouted, What are you talking about, my child? Without evidence, why would you report to the police? Do you consider my daughter a criminal? Introducing her to everyone, this woman is the mother of Heejin and Jisoo, and the author portrays her face as evil enough to understand that she is unpleasant. Ha ha, that girl. You quickly apologize to my Heejin, then invite your parents to meet me for resolution. You can't falsely accuse and harm others like this, as no one believed Day in Yu's words. The girl who was originally the victim now had to lower her head and apologize. Tears streamed down Dayan's face in the satisfaction. And joy of Heejin's two mothers, Dayan could only hold her pain inside, not daring to tell her grandfather for fear that he would worry. Surprised that Aijin had completed the bandaging perfectly, I've finished bandaging your wounds. The bones are fine, but these bruises will probably take a few days to heal. Keep this secret for me. I'm afraid our grandfather will worry if he knows. Thank you. Okay, go to sleep. 
I will speak politely to Grandpa. Dayan didn't tell Aijin either because she feared that, as a student, he wouldn't be able to do much. At this point, you can see the aura of anger emanating from Aijin, right? Aijin is now furious. Preparing for an imminent confrontation.